In your headlines, the TCIG Premier Delivery Unit has kicked off and the country mourns the loss of Honorable Daniel Williams. Hello Turks and Caicos, welcome to PCV Newswatch. Thanks for tuning in on this Wednesday, July 13th, 2022. I'm Khalees Williams with today's newscast. The real news starts now. TCIG has reportedly been discussing a topic for the past months, and on Monday, it was finally conceptualized, and the talks of putting it into action for the people of the TCI has begun. We bring you the details. TCIG held a press conference on Monday, and as it proceeded, we heard from our Premier, Deputy Premier, our Acting Governor, and Dr. Justin Ram. Um, we've been hired by the government of Turks and Caicos to help establish a delivery unit um, within the center of government. And what do we mean by the center of government? We're really at the center of the head of government, which is within the Premier's office, to assist the Turks and Caicos Island government to implement uh, the priorities over the next few years, as it were. Now, what we will be doing is at initially, we've brought um, a cadre of professionals um, to Turks and Caicos to assist with the establishment of that delivery unit. The delivery unit uh, will be initially uh, staffed by members of the consulting team, but um, our role here is really to help the government hire the right individuals from within the local community to be actually the ones who will be running the delivery unit eventually. Newswatch learns that this initiative was spearheaded after an observation was made, especially throughout the Caribbean, where governments would fail to achieve implementing priorities. So what we did here today um, was to go through a list of priorities with the government and for which the delivery unit will be focused on. The Premier and Deputy Premier will be speaking more, more about that. But now that we have a clear idea as to what those priorities are, we will now be focused on actually working out the implementation plans um, for, those, for those priorities, setting what we call key performance indicators or KPIs, and now trying to help the government implement those priorities over the next 15 months that we will be on, on island. And of course, while we do that, we intend to assist in the hiring of the persons who will be the permanent members of the delivery unit after we have left and after we have done our, our, our job here. But while we have done that, um, we will be assisting in inculcating a new culture um, for how government should work here. And what we are hoping is that the ultimate stakeholders, the people of Turks and Caicos, will see um, the fruits of what we are going to be assisting the government in doing so that they can clearly see what this delivery unit has been hired to do. And of course, most importantly, to see the projects come to fruition. Ram said that the delivery unit will also be assisting the government in communicating with these stakeholders quite regularly so that we, the ultimate stakeholders, would be aware as to what the delivery unit is all about and what they're doing. Honorable Charles Washington Mizick elucidated on the government's top priority areas in relation to this pioneering unit. Uh, the government of the Turks and Caicos Islands is in the process of establishing the premium delivery unit to oversee the govern governance of projects, programs, and portfolios, integrate and scale priorities for efficient use of resources, and to evaluate performance to ensure benefits, realization, and continuous improvement in the delivery of public goods and services to the people of the Turks and Caicos Islands. The government has appointed uh, Justin Ram Advisory Services to facilitate the design, the setup, and operationalization of the PDU, operation of the PDU under the Office of the Premier and Public Policy. 
The premiere revealed that this consultancy with JRAS will be completed by this August 23rd, with the premiere's delivery unit projected to be fully operational by that time. Capacity building of TCI talents will be one of the key deliverables of the consultants. And in keeping with the vision document 2040, and its focus on triple bottom line sustainability as outlined in its contract with the people. Turks and Caicos Islands government has identified, subject to cabinet approval, 10 priority projects that it wishes to, to focus on through the Premier's delivery unit. All other projects, and there are several of them, currently included in the midterm budget and those required for the regular improvement of the delivery of public goods will be undertaken by the established process. Uh, let me say that the 10 projects that have been identified uh, will be announced at the press conference, at my press conference on, fr on Friday morning. This delivery unit, as we understand, should sit in the center of government to deliver objectivity and serve the task of delivery in an effective way. As uh, Dr. Ram has already indicated, uh, the, the, the intention is to do business unusual. In other words, uh, you are familiar with the phrase business as usual. Well, this is business unusual uh, in that it is um, as much a, a cultural change uh, in order to learn new ways and adopt new, new strategies for delivering uh, services and goods to the public. Services meaning infrastructure and other tangible deliverables and services mean the improving improvement of the service that the government delivered to the public. At the press conference, it was made clear that the government is not breaking new ground here, but making the point known that it is an increasingly common way to translate campaign promises into reality. And so it is not meant to replace any ministries of government or any functions of government. It is meant to be a, a facilitator. Uh, the, the development, uh, sorry, the delivery unit is an active partner, in other words, to other units of government, not a supervisor or an implementer. It, the intention, as I said, is to facilitate, to problem solve, to clear obstacles, and support government in keeping its focus on the top priorities so that project implementation can succeed. Stay tuned for more of this story in your subsequent newscast as we hear from the remaining members of government and their thoughts on the Premier's delivery unit. For PTV News Watch, I'm Erica Pinales. This just in, we have great news. 15-year-old Jermia Javon Miranique went missing last night and has been located. In this next story, the late Honorable Daniel Williams' official funeral service was held earlier today at the Church of God of Prophecy in North Caicos. Here's more. It is a sad day here in the Turks and Caicos Islands as we mourn the loss of the Honorable Daniel Williams, who was an independent candidate and key figure in Jags McCartney's heroic legacy. He was laid to rest today, July 13, 2022, in an official funeral service in North Caicos at the Church of God of Prophecy. Honorable Daniel Williams was one of two independent candidates who ran for the election on September 29, 1976, and won. He was a man of the church and was dearly loved by the people of his community, who referred to him endearingly as Uncle Dan. Members of Honorable Williams' family tearfully shared their fondness for him and reminisced on memories they shared. Honorable Williams' son, Jed, broke down in tears as he spoke on how great of a father and family man he was, as well as how much he loved his community. He credited his father as the reason for his drive. He stated that the tears that he shed during the funeral was due to his father finally being honored for his works and his selflessness, something that he did not receive in life but was now being recognized in death. Honorable Daniel Williams' death occurred on Thursday, June 2, 2022. 
Newswatch offers our sincerest condolences to the grieving family and may his soul rest in peace. We'll be right back with more Newswatch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. In our foregoing exclusive with Deputy Leader of the People's Democratic Movement, Robert Bean Jr., he revealed to Newswatch that he supports Ashley's Learning Center and its founder, and that the government has slapped her in the face. Newswatch has the details. In your previous newscast, Robert Bean Jr. stood firmly on his position in the matter, saying that the government is completely handling the situation in a negative manner. If it, if it takes for this government to help me or any other Turks and Caicos Islander, where they would expose Detailed information that's not acceptable, such as requesting names of those kids before they can release this funding because they agreed to doing 150. And these are information I've gotten from Ms. Angela. And then they came back, I think, with the $70,000. She submitted what she needed to submit it, and they asked for names of the kids to be released. And she said she cannot do that without the parents' consent. This shows that if the government was engaged at the Ashley Learning Center, they wouldn't need these required documents. They would know that this is an institution that's functioning by code and how it should operate. They're not engaged, they're not visiting these institutions. So this is why they're demanding this because they, don't, they have no idea on what's going on. So they're gonna pretty it up. Yes, we're gonna give you your 70,000 or your 150,000, but not just give the money. Go and visit the institution and see what's needed. These parents need a location for them, their kids. And it's our job since we don't have an institution to provide that institution or any other body that decides the proper funding that's needed. It's the summertime. Rebutting what was said during the ministry's press conference on Friday morning regarding these special needs programs, which are implemented in public schools, deputy leader asked the question, what do they do now that schools are closed? Parents are now left with no place to take their kids. Again, this is special needs kids. They do not need to be mixed in the other institutions with regular kids, these kids need more attention. So the government basically is not providing a facility. You cannot take a special needs kids, kid and put them in, a, in the same setting with another kid. It's more work and more strain on that individual, that teacher. So in my view, and my question, institutions like these is what is seen as should be prioritize, prioritized today. They need the funding now, not a new block of school, they need the funding now. We have a number of parents that had to leave their good paying jobs in Turks and Caicos to move abroad to get better treatment for their, um, kids, their kids. I know of a lot of parents that live abroad today and not because they want to, because they're doing it in the best interest of their kids. Being said that all of this is simply about providing the proper skill sets that are needed for the organization to function. Since we don't have one here that's operated or run by the um, TCIG, so since you have private individuals that decided to start these special need programs, and like I said, I, I believe this is the third one, the third one that would have been failing for lack of funding. If you feel as a government that this, um, this body isn't functioning properly, 
but they do have the location, they have the kids, and it's ready to go. We are the government. Provide them with the nece necessary resources that you need. In fact, correction, not we are the government. They are the government. Provide them with the manpower. It's not that difficult. Even if you were to bring somebody in, temporary, until Ashley Learning Center finds that key person to ensure that the, the, the institution is functioning properly, it wouldn't cost the government a thing to do that. He elucidated on the fact that some parents are unable to care for these kids during the summer because it's straining as funds come directly from them. The government isn't really paying for some of these kids to attend that institution. The government would have been assisting with salaries. So these parents are um, funding these school fees themselves. So their concern is where will they kid go come September? But as of course did a press conference, which was expected. I could have scripted that myself um, after I heard that they were calling a press conference. I knew what the government was coming with. We're not gonna allow this institution to close because it's gonna make the government look bad. We knew they were gonna provide the funding. But it's not gonna stop me from speaking out that the government should have been involved with this situation and this should have never happened. Robert said that the situation could have been handled differently in a way that didn't put the founder at shame and subsequently the center's image. This is where you have a, uh, a, a break in a government actually taking the time out to come and speak with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis to really find out what are the issues, what can we really do. It's not just about the cash. What can we do to ensure that this institution runs properly? Why? Because we have too many Turks Islanders that are dealing with this issue as well. And the government hasn't even breaking ground as yet to provide their own institution, other than what they speak of having one at this school or that school. That, that's, that's not acceptable today. We spend too many time investing money in the wrong areas when this should be prioritized. Bean candidly admitted that he believes the funds which were recently offered to the center served as a quick fix rather than a solution to the real issue. You've heard announcements of the farmer's market about to open up soon, and Newswatch is finally delivering the official news. Take a look. The agriculture department has a lot planned coming up. Um, this month we are scheduled to open the farmer's market in Q-Town. It's going to be called the Q-Town Farmers Market. Um, it's something that the department and farmers have been waiting for for a very long time. And um, we know the public as well because it will be um, a place for you to support the local farmers and get freshly grown TCI produce. Supporting our local farmers is important as you would purchase confidently knowing exactly where a food item came from. The farmer's market now, you ensure one, that you are buying TCI grown. Two, you can establish a relationship with your local farmers and get to know them, understand you know what their challenges are, support them with buying their products and as well um, you know, establish that relationship where you could tell them the kind of things you like and they might be able to grow it. In addition, we will be also um, featuring local food, the traditional local Saturday morning food, because the market is scheduled to open on Saturday morning and run on Saturday mornings. Um, so people, they can come out on the weekend, buy their market produce and get their boiled fish and conch and gully wash and yeah and for the opening we would be having um, a live band the rake and scrape band as well as um, dj prime prime dj the official opening is set to take place on the best day saturday july 23rd 2022 and as director Wilhelmina told newswatch the day sounds very promising initially um because it's the summer period it should be every two weeks and you know because people a lot of people off for the summer period and it's also and this is why i'm saying it will be important to get to know your farmers know the challenges summer is very hot and it's a little bit challenging to grow all the different types of produce um so it the market might be every two weeks um for the summer period and then come september every weekend for sure 
The department will be sending out notices informing the public of the market's opening hours, which is scheduled to be from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And we're hoping that once momentum builds, we do not have to tell the public anymore. We know it's every Saturday morning there is market, similar to all the other Caribbean islands where you can go to the market on market days. It's a traditional thing. People love to go get their fresh produce. And hopefully the momentum that is built will ensure that we're able to expand into other markets and other, the other islands once the agriculture development increases and we get more farmers on board. Director said that the idea stemmed from the demand of farmers on having a space to sell. And we have a few farmers that come from north and sell on the weekend in downtown. But it really generated um, out of the agriculture show with farmers themselves expressing the need to have a space to sell. And, you know, the then government um, started having talks. And then I left in 2018. And between 2018 and now, um, that's when the uh, land was allocated and the market was built through a capital project. And then I am back now in 2015 to now see the opening of the market. For persons who may be interested in being a part of the farmer's market, listen closely to this. So we have a list of um, farmers and we reached out to all of them, basically asking if they would be interested in coming to the market and sell. So initially, we have the few that came forward and said, yes, they are ready. Moving forward, however, um, we'll be calling out on persons. Now, remember, it's locally grown only, not imported items. That's what the farmer's market's about. It's a farmer's market, not a market, you know. So we want to stress it's locally grown only. And so what we would be doing is having a register of persons. So we're asking persons, if you are interested in selling in the market, um, we have one or two um, persons who what we call agro-processed products as well. So like your um, local soap made out of the natural um, materials, people who do, we used to have someone doing teas, um, she's no longer, but those types of persons, persons who do like pepper sauce, who value add products out of the produce, you know, um, we will be encouraging persons. So we want persons to contact the Department of Agriculture if you are interested in selling in the market. Finally, the director told Newswatch that the Department of Agriculture will also have plants on sale for you plant lovers and subsequently farmers are thrilled and counting on you, the public, to show your support at the opening. Farmers are excited. Um, they're a bit skeptical, you know, whether people would come and buy their produce um, because of the, the location is not the typical downtown location, but it's not far from downtown. And um, so they're a bit skeptical. So we want to show them, look, we're ready to support them. And TCI citizens um, are ready to get local fresh produce. So we need to come out and support them. For PTV News Watch, I'm Erica Pinales. Don't move just yet. Coming up next is your sports authority and weather forecast after this break. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business days for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation.
here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to Newswatch. Here's the latest in your sports authority and weather forecasts. In the previous newscast, Newswatch obtained an interview with the president of the TCI Basketball Federation, Sidwell Glasgow. The Honorable Kyle Knowles was interviewed next, first being asked about what it was like to see his vision come to life before him. He shared how pleased he was about the turnout and how he believes activities such as this are necessary countrywide. Seeing my vision come to life is, is definitely a, uh, a gratifying one. Um, seeing the amount of participation is definitely excellent. Um, it just proves that you know positive and wholesome activities are necessary in every community um, throughout the country. Honorable Knowles was then questioned on the activities the children were engaging in on the said day and proceeded to state the needs of the children that they take into consideration at the summer camp. A little bit of everything, um, but primarily just monitoring and, and seeing you know, the necessary needs, um, societal needs that are, that are often neglected, and just you know, taking a lot in as, as they come out and participate with the coaches every day. The MP was then asked how he felt to see so many children from his constituency partaking in the activity he curated. Wherever there's a need, um, it's important for representatives and leaders to fill those gaps. Um, seeing that there are a lot of residents um, who have their kids participating, like I said, speaks volumes and it shows that we need to do more and we have to create more avenues such as this for kids to be involved, um, to be involved in. In regards to what he had learned while being on the field with the young ones, Honorable Kyle Knowles responded by saying how the experience will help to better him as a leader and that it gave him the opportunity to witness any issues firsthand. I've been learning a lot. I think sometimes we take um, responsibility and accountability for granted. I think this has just helped me to grow as an individual um, and more so as a leader uh, and as a representative of my constituency. Um, but it's definitely, it was definitely needed because being on the ground and staying on the ground provides the right opportunity for you to address concerns, address needs as they come to you as, as the representative. So I've been learning a lot. In his closing remarks, Honorable Kyle Knowles shared words of encouragement, urging for the creation of more programs where youth can engage in different skill sets. I would encourage many other persons and organizations to get involved, provide avenues and outlets. Um, one of the things that you know we hear a lot is that when we do activities like this, it comes off as um, creating a nursery environment. And I think we need to have more structured programs that can provide different skill sets for different kids. Um, it doesn't always have to be sports, it can be academics, it can be something from the arts. So I think it's important for us to do many other activities like this to, to create a well-rounded individual for our society. Here's your weather forecast for July 14th, 2022. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, mostly cloudy skies, high 84, low 80, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For South Caicos, mostly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For North and Middle Caicos, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And on Providencialis, partly cloudy skies, high 85, low 80, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. 
Here's your sunrise and sunset. Sunrise, 6.15 a.m. Sunset, 7.36 p.m. Now for your high and low tides. High tide, 8.45 a.m., 9.12 p.m. Low tide, 2.44 a.m., 2.46 p.m. And for your hurricane outlook, for the North Atlantic Caribbean Sea and the Gulf of Mexico, a surface trough extending from the Florida Panhandle west-southwestward along the northern Gulf Coast is producing disorganized showers and thunderstorms over the northern Gulf of Mexico and adjacent land areas. The surface trough is forecast to drift northward over land during the next few days and significant tropical development is not anticipated. And that's it for your weather forecast and hurricane outlook. That's the end of today's edition of Newswatch, but don't forget you can always catch us on our website at www.ptv8tci.com and every weekday right here at 6.30 p.m. I'm Kalise Williams, stay informed, thanks for watching.